With step one now being pass fail, pretty much makes step two CK the new step one and thus super important for you to do well on to get into your dream residency. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the exact strategy I use to get a 257 on step two CK and the steps you can take to crush the exam as well. Let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to do a full breakdown of how to do well on step two CK and we're gonna be covering a lot. So if you're interested, feel free to check out the timestamps down below and go to the part of the video or the episode that is most pertinent to you. But as an overview, a few of the things that we'll be talking about include how much time Time you need to study, what is considered to be a good score for a competitive residency, as well as what your study strategy should look like when you're on the rotations, as well as when you have dedicated time just to study for step two CK. At the very end, we'll talk briefly about some of the resources you can use to help you do well, but doing it with less stress. And as a teaser, towards the end of the episode, I'm gonna give you one tip that really helped me boost my score on a weekly basis when I was studying for step two CK, as well as one resource that I didn't have access to, but I really wish I did, because it would have made the entire scheduling process so much easier. So make sure you stay tuned. First, let's go ahead and break down how long you need to study. Now this will vary from school to school as well as your particular situation. So for example, I was able to fit one of my one month vacations during my fourth year during my summer and I was able to study for step two CK during that time. But some students may not have that luxury of having that full month off. And so if you're in that situation, I usually will recommend adding anywhere from two to four months into your study schedule and ask yourself how long it will take you to get through your question bank source. Question banks typically for step two CK is going to be your world. So come up with how many questions you have to go through and ask yourself how long would it take me to go through your world about one and a half times. Usually the first pass to do all the questions and then at least another half pass where you're going through all the questions that you've missed or guessed correctly on. So that way you're getting a nice review and repetition in. Also keep in mind that compared to step one where most students will delay using your world until it's time to really get into the studying, a lot of students will use your world in addition to their rotations to help them prepare for the rotation itself as well as the shelf exam. So you likely won't have as many questions that you think remaining. And so sometimes that four to eight week block of dedicated prep in addition to a busy rotation may be perfect for you. And next, let's talk about a question I know all of you guys have, which is what is actually considered to be a good score? What should be my goal to go for, particularly now that step one is pass fail? Now, instead of just making up numbers, I am big and going into the data. So I've already done the research for you, but if you're interested in actually going through this document, just go ahead and Google charting outcomes NBME match, and you'll find the most recent version, which as the making of this video is in 2020. So essentially what this will tell you is the data of everyone who has surveyed and actually responded. So that is a caveat to remember of what their scores were, what their step one score were, which won't matter for you guys because now it's pass fail, but also how many research experience did they had, did they match or not? And so if we go to the part of the document that we actually care about, which is the average step two score, then we'll realize that at least in 2020, and keep in mind step one score still existed, the average score for people that were matching was 247. Now this comes with a big caveat that this is dependent on the students who are responding to the survey. So if somebody who didn't do so well on step two CK or didn't do well in the residency match, they may not have responded to the survey. And so this may actually over inflate what the scores may have been, but we have pretty good amount of data here. We have 16,000 students who matched and about 1,500 students who didn't. And so having that score of 247 gives you a nice little breakdown. Now, what will happen over the next few years now that step one is pass fail, I typically will probably expect that the score will stay more or less the same until students and schools start to focus more on step two CK studying much earlier on. And so you may find that your school starts to give you question resources like UWorld maybe in your second year for you to start doing question blocks and other resources. And then you may start to see the score start creeping up in the 250s. In addition to seeing the average score, I think more importantly is for you to be able to see the score based off of the specialties you're interested in. So if we go to this document right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in, then this basically breaks down the average step two score and the range for students who matched as well as didn't match. And so if I find the specialty I'm in, which I'm an internal medicine physician, then I'll be able to see that people that match got between a 230 and a 250. Now I got a 257, so again, that basically tells you that there are people who did much better than me who probably just didn't respond and thus is not reported within this document. Um, and then you can essentially find what you wanna do. So if you wanna be a neurosurgeon, you can say, cool, like I'm clearly gonna need a much higher average step two C's K score compared to my peers who may be going for family medicine or pediatrics. So if you guys are interested, you guys can check out the charting outcomes data. I'll actually link it down below in the description. So you guys don't have to actually waste time Googling it. Just keep in mind they update it every two to three years. So this data will likely change, particularly now that step one is pass fail. Just expect that score to stay on the high side, if not be a little bit on the higher side, closer to the low 250s. So usually my answer to a student who's asking like what score should I aim for, typically I'll say aim for the 250 because if you get higher than a 250, you can essentially go into any residency without worrying that your step two CK is a check mark that's not quite there. 
In my personal experience, when I saw that score of a 257, I definitely had a big sigh of relief saying that, okay, my step two CK is not gonna cost me having a spot in a residency program that I'm really interested in. Then I could focus on really building up the rest of my residency CV and doing well in med school. Now let's go ahead and get in part of the episode that I'm most excited about, which is the study strategy. First, let's talk about what your study strategy should look like on the rotations. Now, every rotation will fit on a spectrum of how relaxed it is and how much it allows you to do step two CK study. So my personal experience, certain rotations like psychiatry and neurology definitely gave me a lot more study time compared to rotations like internal medicine or surgery where the hours were long and I just had to always be in the hospital. And here on the channel, as well as our website, we have tons of videos and blog posts breaking down each individual rotation and what resources and the best tips to help you do well on each of those. And so if you guys are interested, I will link down below a link to our website, as well as our clinical rotations playlist that we have here on YouTube. But the main thing to remember is once you understand if a rotation is busy, then ask yourself, okay, like how much time and what resources can I really commit to? The main thing in terms of strategy that you should really be focused on for your rotations is having a schedule that you'll be doing for questions, particularly to that rotation. So if I'm on internal medicine, I may say every day, I'm going to go for at least five questions on a minimum. The goal is to do 10 to 15. And the way you would come up with those numbers for each rotation is you would look at the U world questions, particularly to that subject. So if I was on psych and I noticed they had 400 questions and I had four weeks, that means I had to roughly get through hundred questions each week. And then you'll have to ask yourself how many days you'll be able to commit to doing questions. So maybe you have seven days, but three of them may be busy for your psych rotation. So you only have four days. That means you have to do roughly about 20 to 25 questions to get to that hundred average by the time the four weeks is done. Now, once you have your question schedule set in stone, and again, at the very end of the episode, I'll talk about a resource that can speed this process up. Then the next thing is ask yourself, like what resource can I fit in addition to help me do well for step two CK? Usually I'll have some kind of text that helps me follow along with the rotation as well as my questions. My main focus is questions every day and then do some reading versus the other way around, which is most students do, which is they focus too much on their reading and then they'll do like four or five questions here and there. It's not very consistent. So very heavy focus on making sure you do your questions and then use your reading in the same light saying, I have four weeks to get through this many chapters. How many do I have to get through on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, and then break that down. That will be your schedule for your rotations without making it over too complicated. Essentially just two resources, one text, one questions with the heaviness on the questions. And my last tip for the rotations to prep effectively for step two CK is going to be essentially creating a list of the questions that you're missing. Now you can do this using whatever technique you want. I actually used a physical notebook when I was in my rotations because I just like actually liked writing things down. But as I got into more and more rotations and things got a little bit busier, I started using more digital options, initially started using Excel, but you can use things like Notion or Anki and other flashcard systems. Again, there's tons of videos and episodes that we've made here on the channel on how to study well. I'll link down below an episode that I did on all the study strategies that really helped me get a 3.9 GPA in med school. And most of that GPA actually came from my rotation. So if you guys are interested, I would link that down below. But whatever technique you use, continue to collect every time you miss a question saying, the last thing I wanna do is miss it now and also miss it on my shelf exam and particularly on step two CK. So when you miss something, collect it in a way and then come back to it periodically. It may be saying on the weekends, I'm gonna review the list of everything that I missed and make sure that I at least have refreshed on the topic. And then maybe before my shelf exam, and then we'll talk about how you can use it for step two CK later in the episode. Now let's go ahead and talk about how your strategy would change during your dedicated. Now, if you're imagining that you had four weeks because we'll use that as an example, the first two weeks, really the only goal is just get through all the questions you have left or as many that are possible. And so for example, as the making of this episode, UWorld has about 4,000 questions for step two CK, which is crazy, but ideally you've been doing questions with your rotations. And so you may come into your dedicated finding that you only have 2,000 or 2,500 left to do. And so if we use that example of four weeks, you may say, okay, I have two weeks or that's 14 days. I may spend two of those 14 doing practice tests. So that gives me 12 days to go through these questions. And so you would use the same concept that we did for rotations. You would divide the total questions by the days you actually have to study and then come up with a number and ask yourself how realistic it is. For example, if you had 2000 questions, but 12 days to review, that's about 200 questions a day. And you may find that doing four blocks or doing five blocks of uh, UWorld is just not feasible. And thus you may decide, okay, let's go ahead and try to finish all these in three weeks. And then you'll figure out, okay, that's 100 and roughly 120 questions. And that's three blocks, much easier to say yes to. So that main focus during that dedicated, during that first two, two and a half to three weeks, should be getting through the rest of the questions in UWorld that you haven't gone through yet. And so usually that would mean that your day will be anywhere from 80 to 120 questions. For some students, especially if you have a lot more of UWorld to cover, meaning that you have to do 160 questions, but usually two to three blocks of 40 questions is a sweet spot. Now to finish off practice questions, you want to make 
make sure that you're gonna spend all this time doing these questions that you actually learn from your mistakes. So just like we were doing before during rotations, use that said study method and collect all of the mistakes that you're making. Any questions that you got wrong or a question where you guessed correctly but you actually didn't understand what the concept was. Add that to your list, add that to your flashcards, and then usually, this is what I would do in my personal setting, is every morning I would go to that system for 15 to 30 minutes and saying, let's just make sure that you don't make the same mistake again, Laksh. And ideally now I start to see my score go higher and higher. And for some students, the schedule of doing three blocks plus review, plus reviewing the mistakes that they've done from prior days may just be all that they have time for. But if you do have more time in your schedule or if you have a longer dedicated prep, usually I'd recommend finding just one resource that you really enjoy and committing to it, ideally in the middle of the day where your energy tends to be lower. So that's a great time to transition into some of the best resources for step two CK. And I intend to make a much more elaborative episode on this. So if you guys are interested, make sure you add the comment section down below on YouTube. But let's just first talk about practice questions. I would just stick with UWorld, wouldn't really focus too much on anything else, except using the practice NBMEs on a weekly basis to get a practice question set essentially done. You can also use the examples and the self-assessments that UWorld gives you. That's anywhere from five to six exams that you have available to you. You by no means have to do all of them. My usual schedule was to do one on a Saturday, take the rest of Saturday off, review the test on a Sunday morning and take the rest of Sunday off, and then use Monday and Friday to pretty much be very question heavy. Now in terms of resources that are focused is much more on content to help you build that understanding of step two related topics. I'll recommend all of those in a future episode, so make sure you guys subscribe. But the main one that I enjoyed recommending has to be Online Med Ed. And my personal experience using OME or Online Med Ed was that I really enjoyed the videos from Dr. Williams, particularly during my rotations, so it nicely fit into my step two CK prep. And full disclosure, because I wanted to spend more time doing questions, I actually didn't dive into the videos very much during my step two CK prep. Instead, because I had already seen most of those videos during my rotations, I used the nice Online Med Ed notes that come with each corresponding video and went through those as a nice review and refresher. And if there was ever a point or a topic that I was still struggling on, then I would dive into the video to get a better understanding. And if you guys are interested in learning more about online med ed, I've done a full review, particularly right after I took step two CK on how I used it. So I'll link down below that blog post as well as that video. And if you guys want to check it out, it'll also be linked down below. It is an affiliate link. So if you guys are interested, we do get a commission, but by no means do you have to feel pressure to use that link. You can just type in online med ed and Google and go to their link. Now the next resource that I just incidentally came across when I was studying for step two CK happened to be step two CK secrets. Now this is a very small book full of a list of questions that are a fair game for step two CK. And the way I use step two CK secrets is that I added it towards my last week, week and a half. Again, my first two weeks were spent finishing all my year old questions. And then I transitioned to just doing all of the questions that I had marked because I got it wrong or I guessed correctly. I added step two CK secrets as an additional question source, because then I was really just using it as a confidence booster. It's just a list of questions with the corresponding answer immediately afterwards. It doesn't really teach you anything. It just gives you the answer there. And I could say that if I knew the answer to everything in that book, I'd feel pretty confident going into the test. And by no means should it be your first or your go-to resource, but it's a nice confidence booster you can add to the very end. So in case you're interested, there are plenty of used options that are just work perfectly fine. I'll link down below some links to Amazon you guys can check out if you're interested. Now the next resource is something that we've already naturally fit into the rest of the episode. And that is your personalized list of missed questions and weak topics. Now we've already talked about how to fit this into your rotations by doing it on a weekly basis, as well as how to do this with your UL questions by doing it at the start of your day. But it's nice to have a list of questions again on Excel or Notion or flashcards and essentially being able to demarcate where you've been able to cover a topic. So for example, I've had a big hundred list of questions that I just missed. I could quickly put those topics down on the list and anything that I had covered and felt that I had gotten confidently on, I would put like a green um, highlight on them or Notion I may bold it or on my Excel sheet, I may go ahead and change it to a different color. Any topic on my list that I tried to review, but I was like, ah, you kind of still suck at this. I may color code it as orange or red and saying, okay, this is a good indication that on a weekly basis, maybe on a Saturday, come back to your list and find the next orange topic and then go watch a video on it. So again, my resource of choice was online med ed. So if I found that I was struggling with ob guide topics, because I always struggled with those for step two CK, then particularly I would go to those relevant videos. And then if I felt that I had mastered it, I would then change my color from orange to green. But I found this to be a very nice way of one, collecting my mistakes from your world and putting it in one place, but also visually being able to see as I'm going through my reviews the second time of saying, okay, everything is now is green your test is tomorrow, you got this and your confidence stays up. And simply using that trick of going through this list of questions on a daily and a weekly basis and then color coding it based off my confidence level, I really found that my score started improving because I was no longer missing those questions that were related in UOL the second time. And I saw, okay, I went from 40% on my UOL percentages, now 60, 70, 80s, and ultimately getting that 257 on step two CK. 
Now I promised at the start of the episode I'd share a nice tool that'd help you improve and quickly speed up the scheduling process for step two CK. So let's go ahead and dive into CramFighter. Now, if you guys are not familiar with CramFighter, it's essentially a nice automated study scheduler for essentially any test you wanna do. And I think the best way to show you how it works is to just go ahead and dive in. So you can essentially create a new study plan and we're gonna say we're gonna study for a standardized exam. I'm gonna graduate next year. That's my med school that I went to. And I can say, I'm gonna study for step two CK in this example. And it'll essentially ask you like, how far is your test? So maybe you are three rotations away or maybe you're six months away. We'll say we're three months away. Now I wanna start studying tomorrow and I wanna finish again. I usually wanna say a week before the exam. So that way, if anything goes wrong, I still have buffer time. So we'll put that and then boom. Now, once you decide on your schedule, you can actually decide on the resources you intend to use. So you can actually go in here and type in things like your world and I may go ahead and click this and then I'll say, because I'm three months away, every day I'm gonna actually try to just do 10 questions. That's gonna be my total number of daily questions that I'm gonna do and then add that in. And then in addition, I'm gonna go ahead and add on online med ed um, as my other main resource and then that's what we'll stop because we'll cover the clinicals. And now through online med ed, I can essentially click through every topic that I haven't covered. And so if I've covered anything in the neurology system, but I'm using blueprints and cram fighter now that I can take those off the list. But for this example, we'll just say we haven't touched online meta at all. And so I'll just apply all of it. So this is going to give me an average amount of time per day. And I can also say, Oh, I actually like listening to most of my videos at two X. So then it actually adjusts everything. Now, once it quickly creates my schedule and now I'll be able to see on each and every day, what videos I need to go through and then how many you will questions I have to do. And if for any reason, if I'm falling behind, I can move any topic to the next day or essentially say, I've already done it and check it off. And crime fighter, comes with a bunch of other resources. For example, I can choose the days that I wanna click off. So if I'm gonna go out of the country or out of the city for vacation, I can add those days. If I wanna add a catch up day every few weeks, I can put that into my routine. And if I know that Sundays are gonna be a busy day, I can say, um, make sure I do a light workload. And then Mondays, if I have more time open, I can add more work there. So lots of little flexibilities and things. And again, if you guys are interested in learning more about the features that Crime Fighter offers, I've done a full blog post review on them and I'll link it down below. But if you guys are interested in checking out Crime Fighter, I'll add their link down below in the description as well. Now we've covered a lot of how to do well on step two CK, but if you guys are interested on how I use something called the sandwich technique using online meta to get that 257, then make sure you check out this episode, which I'll link down below in the description. But as always, my friends, hopefully I was a little help to you guys on your journey. Thanks for being a part of mine. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.